Take of the birds, take of the birds. Ah! <laughs> they think <laughs> they think you've got food. Oh my word. This come here quickly. Where is he? Look what I can see. Oh, they want to come up here. Oh, oh. Ooh. Come on. Move out the way. They want to come up. Biggest question from mum. How many fingers do you have left? Well, <laughs> how did you go to the other side of the planet to lose your fingers? Are you stupid? Uh, very good reason for what we do here today. That bite is something they can lose. We really want them to keep that bite for the whole of their lifespan. So Emily Annan works out for her food, pulls and tugs and uses her jaws, she'll oh. keep it nice and big and strong. Oh. Uh, and nonetheless, if they use their jaws, they're going to keep it strong. If they sit on their bottoms all day, eat little bits of chewed up meat, it'll actually fade away. So it's all about exercise, think about us, we go to the gym, we go and play sports, devils have to do the same sort of thing to keep those muscles. So, 
Mum's next to the question. Hanging up there, a special pair of gloves. Well, not a lot of point when they get this big. How long can they live? Uh, uh, about four to five years in the wild, in captivity sometimes, six to seven years old. Okay, so they live in captivity. Six to seven years old. In captivity, sometimes six to seven years old. Six to seven. Six to seven, absolutely. It's captive age. Wild, a little bit shorter. Now, very short lifespan for our Tassie devils, and nonetheless, these creatures need to be able to help them grow to full size within a whole year. Yeah. So, by the end of one year old, they're going to be full grown devils. Now, nonetheless, to have a bout and a crunch like that, there's a reason why they need it. Devils eat everything to get that big that quickly. Now, they grow from the size of a grain of rice when they're first born into <coughs> this. Wow. So, very, very quick growth rate, and they need to eat a lot of food to help them with that. In fact, a devil like Kit is nearly one of the third his body weight. He weighs nearly 12 kilograms. One third of his weight, nearly four kilograms of meat. So, it's a big portion of food. If he's going to eat that much, two rules. First rule, can't be fussy about what he's eating. Everything is edible. The jaws and teeth make it so. The other rule, he doesn't share. So this is girlfriend in the tube. <laughs> Boyfriend, girlfriend. Do they like each other? <coughs> Not in the slightest. He is a solitary animal, as is she, and at best they put up with each other. Toleration rather than love or life. Devils are solitary, so they dummy today, uh, they can smell the food. Now, he has such a sensitive little nose that he can smell his food two to three kilometers away. So two to three kilometers is about the same distance the dogs they use in the airports to check with that to smell their food from. Meat, absolutely, they got wallaby meat today, is what they do. It's a certainly fantastic sense of smell. Uh, that little wet nose there, he can smell the food before I get down the hill. So it didn't take him too long to get out of bed for us today. He smells it before I arrive. Uh, nonetheless, fantastic hearing. His ears are pink and red. That's the blood flow. Now they get the change of the colour of the ears, pink and red, when they use them. So if the devil is asleep, they're going to have cream or peach toned ears. They change the pink and red when they start those. But there is one sense that's not very good. And the best way to describe that is if I throw the lumps of meat on the ground. Now if I throw the meat there, rather than give it to him, we say walk him over the top. You notice how he walks straight past his food? It looks a bit lost, doesn't he? Now, eventually, they get there, it takes them a few more moments to register quite where it's gone. The devils can see, but they can only see what's just in front of them. Oh. So, unless there's some movement involved, it's almost invisible to their eyes. When I hold the meat and I play tuggy with them, the reason why they don't bite my hands, why they bite the meat, is I make sure the meat moves. Because it's moving, they're going to bite that first. Not beyond a meter, so only just in front of them, and only really a very short, <coughs> very poor eyesight. So um, they rely very much on movement. So if something moves, eyes will pick it out. If it doesn't move, it's quite easy for them to nearly walk past it. Instead, they follow their nose. So the nose and the ears are far more sensitive, far better, than their sense of eyesight. So we've started off with two slightly older devils. I'm going to take you to meet a group so we can hear some of the devil sounds. After all, they're very famous for some of the noises they make. So, yes, they hear the sounds. Yeah, absolutely. Their ears are so thin on the top that you can actually see all of the blood vessels flowing through. So the blood makes the ears change colour when they become active. So if they're less polite than devils, uh, they will make a lot more noise. Smell and hearing, guys, so they're the things that will draw them out towards us. And in this pen, we have four devils, two of them already away. They do make some pretty amazing sounds, so when they approach each other, have a listen to the vocalizations. They are very famous for those sounds and noises that they generate. Now, the only time I really believe that devils deserve their reputation as a Tasmanian devil is mating and breeding season. And around our mating season, our male devils, they get a big boost of testosterone. They're going to need that. They have to approach the girls. For most of the year, it's the female devils who regularly beat the boys up on a daily basis. <laughs> so the girls rule the roost. But around breeding season, everything changes. 
male devils full of that newfound courage approach the girls. Now the girls get something we call dopamine. It sounds very complicated, but all it is is a hormone that makes them go a little bit slower and more relaxed. Our males take advantage of that change and the male devil grabs the female by a special ring of fat around her neck. The female devil is pulled and dragged towards a burrow or den and she will be trapped inside for about a week to a week and a half while they mate. Now she won't be allowed to leave during this process as far as the male is concerned for good reason. Our female devils can have babies from two fathers in the same litter of kids. Ooh. So half their babies can be from one dad, half their babies from a different father. Wow, incredible. But, uh, so you can probably guess our boys aren't keen on all of that idea. They want all the kids to be theirs, so our boys stand guards. Trouble is, end of a week and a half, the two weeks gone, female devil wants to go home. So she's got a nice way to get rid of our boys. She bites the bottom of the male. There's the majority of all of their fur, fluff and skin from their tails and their backsides till eventually the male devil gets up and allows the female to leave. In the wild, a lot worse. Not only would you have the girls biting your bottom, you're also going to have other boys try and sting the girls off you. They'll almost certainly be biting the face. So here comes a male. This is Caddock. Mm. Slightly bigger, nice big white jaw. Now in the wild, Caddock wouldn't look pretty like this. He would have mated and bred several times over the last two years. And of course the girls would be able to tell that. They would be able to see all of his scars and cuts on the buttocks in the rear. And they would know he'd be a good mating partner. Nonetheless, in yeah. some ways, the more scars, more cuts, more wounds they get, the better would they actually become. <laughs> if you want to be George Clooney, Brad Pitt, Chris Hemsworth, Ooh. Justin Bieber, better to have the eye missing. I think it's pretty extraordinary. The average Tasmanian devil doesn't just make one or two babies, he actually produces kids in one go. Now 20 to 40 baby Tasmanian devils are all born blind, deaf, furthest, the size of a grain of rice. We call those baby devils not a joey, but an imp. I am